Wai Moon Voyer from Austria is a Korean medicine doctor who hopes to globalize Korean medicine. He decided to become a Korean medicine doctor as he was mesmerized by the acupuncture practice of Korean medicine. It looks like uh, natural, it looks like safe. Mm -hmm. uh, so that all attracted me very strong and I said, okay, that's something I want to do. He looks for ways to develop and globalize Korean medicine. On today's Heart to Heart, we will meet with Director Raimund Royer to discuss the present and future of Korean medicine. The global traditional medicine market is currently valued at 202 billion US dollars and is expected to reach 5 trillion US dollars by 2050. Now this is a potential sign for the growth of the Korean medicine market so long as we work towards making it. And today we are joined with Dr. Raimund Royer, the first Western traditional Korean medicine doctor active in Korea. Thank you for joining us today. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Would you like to say hello to our viewers that are watching? Hello, everybody at home. I uh, hope you are healthy. If not, you know where to go from now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, now, first of all, as we do have viewers from watching around the globe, uh, the program is, of course, uh, it's broadcast internationally. Could you begin by explaining to our viewers what hanbang, what hanui hak, traditional Korean medicine is? Uh, Korean traditional medicine is basically, uh, it's very familiar to most of people, but not in the same name. They mm -hmm. know it more like Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine, yes. which means a combination of using acupuncture as a mm -hmm. treatment, herbal medicine, uh, moxibustion, uh, marchuna manipulation. So those package of, medi of, of medical treatments, that's uh, what uh, Korean medicine is also like. Basic, let's call it philosophy, the old philosophy. They have the same roots, but uh, developed in different directions, I would that's call right. it. Uh, we'll be talking more about the differences between traditional Chinese medicine and the one mm. uh, of Japan, as well as Korean traditional medicine, uh, traditional Korean medicine, but uh, how long has it been since you've uh, worked in Korea as a traditional Korean medicine doctor? Uh, since I graduated uh, medical uh, school here mm -hmm. in Korea, now it's about 21 years, um, 21 years. Uh, practicing. Yes. Wow. It's a long time for me too. Very long yeah. time. So Korea is like a home to you? It's a, of course, it's home <laughs> to me now. I live longer in Korea than I lived in my home country, mm. Austria. Yes. Uh, so how did you, how and when actually, did you first become interested in uh, Korean medicine? When were you introduced to Korean medicine? That's a long time ago, actually. I came to Korea, first time I came to Korea was 1987. Mm. And it was even before the Olympic Games in, in Seoul. Mm -hmm. So Korea was not well known to the Western countries. Mm. Uh, for me, it was more, it was not medicine at that time. It was more the, the East Asian culture overall. I was interested in the, this different kind of culture, all what is related, Buddhism, martial arts, all oh. this kind of stuff. When you're young, you're interested. Uh, so I wanted to see one of those countries and Korea was not very well known at that time, so I chose Korea. When I was here, I did different kind of things like martial arts also. And one day I injured my ankle, I sprained my ankle. Oh. And that was actually uh, start the start point of uh, getting known or introduced to mm -hmm, Korean mm -hmm. medicine because I was I was told for this kind of spread angle you have to get acupuncture right. yeah, it's the best <laughs> but it was so interesting because basically he did not much treat my ankle which was surprising mm -hmm. and I thought what's going on here mm -hmm. because he put some needles somewhere all everywhere in my body 
and asked me to stand up and walk. And as I did, uh, after a few minutes, I really felt some relief in the ankle. So for me, it was fascinating and disturbing at the same time. Uh -huh. What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not what I know about treatment. If I have an ankle problem, I want to do, have the treatment here in my ankle. Uh -huh. uh, from that time, I said, OK, that's something I, wa I have to know. Uh -huh. I want to know more about it. And I think that's a good kind of, uh, that's a good approach for treating people. It's, it looks like uh, natural, it looks like safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was also, uh, I, I, I saw this kind of herbal medicine were produced in this mm -hmm. clinic and the smell there and this kind of different uh, yeah, atmosphere. So that all attracted me very strong and I said, okay, that's something I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so since we are on the topic of traditional Korean medicine, I'd also like to ask you, how well known is Korean medicine uh, in Western cultures? Uh, so I would say internationally known, uh, the Chinese medicine is internationally known more than Korean medicine, but we are on the way to change this step by step. Okay. With, uh, let's say over the history, of course, they, they worked together, they developed ideas together and they uh, exchange their information, mm -hmm. Chinese, Korean, but now in, in, in the modern time, I think Korean traditional or Korean medicine uh, maybe is a little bit more advanced. I would mm -hmm. call it a little bit more advanced, a bit, a bit more scientific, if you want. Modern forms yeah, of, uh, of acupuncture, for instance, we try mm -hmm. to combine the needle acupuncture, which is well known, yes. uh, and there is herbal medicine, which is also known to an extent, mm -hmm. and we try to combine it, uh, we call it uh, pharmacopuncture mm -hmm. or herbal injections. The idea of needle, the acupoints, mm -hmm. we inject uh, herbal extracts in certain acupoints. Yeah? Ah. And by this, we increase the effect and the duration of the effect. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that's uh, some modern uh, forms. Or there's the constitutional medicine, which distinguish persons according to their organ, basic unborn, inborn organ function. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, only Korean. Now, I know that you have been uh, emphasizing the need to globalize Korean medicine, but more than acupuncture. So could you, um, since we're on the topic of herbal medicine, could you tell us about the effects of herbal medicine and the kinds of illnesses maybe that, uh, you know, can be cured or treated with herbal medicine? I mean, uh, there's a huge variety of, of um, problems or, or disease which can mm -hmm. be treated, internal medicine, digestive problem, or a simple cold, you know, when I catch a cold. Mm -hmm. I only use herbal medicine for fighting the cold, I and see. it works perfectly. Uh -huh. but th those are very basic ones. But mm -hmm. for instance, uh, what we are doing is treating spinal condition mm -hmm. and degenerative condition. Yeah, you have degenerative joint problems yes. like uh, arthritis, degenerative, or you have disc problems problems, yeah? spinal stenosis, which mm -hmm. is seen as a very serious condition, yeah? with, uh, including a lot of pain, but also uh, um, uh, yeah, your life is, is misery mm -hmm. if you have those kind of conditions. Oh, yes, of course. And in most cases, uh, Western medicine uh, doesn't have very good options to mm -hmm. treat those conditions. Yeah? For instance, Western medicine is more focusing on pain release, mm -hmm. whatever approach, yeah, like painkillers or in severe cases, surgery. Mm -hmm. However, what we are doing, we are not just treating the pain by using this kind of herbal medicine. We have seen it works very well, treating the pain. But additionally, and that we found out through different studies we have done, uh, the, those herbal medications help to actually uh, regenerate uh, mm. spinal tissues like uh, bone cells, cartilage, mm -hmm. nerve cells we have seen uh, regenerate. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting to see what we could do and what we can do yeah, with herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, from my experience, I would say um, there's a lot of potential mm -hmm. uh, to treat a lot of different kind of conditions with herbal yes. medicine. So East Asian or herbal medicine does have a um, great growth potential, but um, you know, globalization of traditional Korean medicine, it, it can't be, it really be done by a single person or even a single, I guess, private organization. So what do you think uh, is needed? What should we do or what can we do to um, help promote or even raise awareness of Korean medicine overseas? Mm. 
Yeah, I think um, I'm involved in, in this kind of promotion yes. uh, uh, issue. So, so I know how, how the Korean government is working and they're doing some good jobs. Yeah? Mm -hmm. we, we are doing conferences abroad, uh, introducing our kind of different treatments. Uh, but we also, for instance, uh, we try to go to different countries and really do treatments on site ah, yeah? uh -huh. so that the people can really not just hear about it or see about it but really feel experience mm -hmm. what we are doing and see ah oh, this somehow works it's a good option for me it would be important to uh, to get uh, let's call it a medical personal medical staff mm -hmm. yeah? M medical doctors for instance western doctors or, yes. or those persons who are interested in this kind of uh, um, alternative approach medicine to come to korea and mm -hmm. study this kind of uh, medicine yeah? uh, so the exchange of knowledge mm -hmm. yeah i think it's a it's a very Im important part of of, of and that and in this part i think maybe the korean government or the korean medical society or korean uh, medical society has to do a bit more in mm -hmm. order to attract uh, foreign people like yes. me uh -huh. yeah to study this kind of medicine in Korea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, at the moment uh, in Korea, we have actually kind of two medical societies. Mm -hmm. yeah, the allopathic, the Western uh, medical society, and then the traditional yes. or the Korean medical society. And I think uh, now it's time to kind of integrate those mm -hmm. both yeah, and get the best of both sides, mm -hmm. which, uh, for instance, in our hospital, we are already doing. We have the integrative uh, approach. Mm -hmm. We have so-called Western medical doctors and traditional medical doctors working together for the best of the patient. Yes, yes. Yeah? And I think that's a good thing. And uh, maybe in the future we have to, or the government is already trying to find ways to melt them together and, mm -hmm. and, and improve even the... Uh, upgrade the standard of both sides mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. i think that then korean medicine is really competitive in the world yes. because then you have all the good things together <laughs> of course yeah. why did dr raimund royer who initially visited korea out of curiosity about asian culture major in korean medicine with the passion for korean medicine he earned the title as the first ever Westerner to become a Korean medicine doctor. Dr. Raimund Royer reflects on his past endeavors that made the journey possible. Now I would like to shift our focus to treatments. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to treatments, um, I mean, what you did mention, you know, some severe or even minor illnesses, people come uh, to see you to receive treatment. But could you tell us a bit more in detail about the different types of treatments uh, patients can receive? And acupuncture, the idea is um, there are different kind of uh, philosophies behind the acupuncture treatment. One is, uh, we call it the meridian idea, mm -hmm. the meri meridian kind of concept. Uh, meridian means our body consists of energy, basically. Yeah, we know every, everything is energy at mm -hmm. the end. Mm -hmm. yeah? And energy always flows. This energy flowing throughout our system, which is called Qi in Korea, mm -hmm. or internationally better known on the Ji, yeah, the Chinese word. So this kind of Qi flow, uh, when it's uh, kind of disturbed in some sense, then slowly disease or, or mm. health problems develop. Mm -hmm. yeah? So with acupuncture, actually, we 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 um, we set needles in in acupoints mm -hmm. where the we, where we can regulate the energy flow. Ah. Yeah. Uh, so that's the idea of, of the acupuncture, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's the meridian idea. And, and then we have uh, herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. And herbal medicine is a science by itself, I would say. It's, a, it's very complex, I have to admit. It's very complex. You need a lot of background studies mm -hmm. in order to understand not just 
each herb, the effect, each herb has an effect or how it works, how it influences the function of your organs. Yes. Yeah? Uh, and then usually we don't use one herb. In Western countries often mm. they use like herbal teas yeah? for cin cinnamon or whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. chamomile. So those, those are single herbs, but we usually we use a, c a combination of different herbs. Mm -hmm. So it gets very complex to understand what uh, effect or how they work together, yes. those kind of herbs, uh -huh. in order to get an additional effect mm -hmm. in your, uh, when it comes in t into your body. So that's herbal medicine. So it's a very complex, but very interesting and very effective. Mm -hmm. It's art. I call it art. <laughs> to prescribe the right uh, uh -huh. medication to the mm -hmm. right condition of each person because it's very indiv individual. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have uh, one medicine which is used for all right. kind of colds. Uh -huh. And then we, we also have, for instance, uh, chuna manipulation. Mm -hmm. We call it chuna manipulation, which is manipulation of spine or joints if they're misaligned or mm -hmm. whatever. There's a lot of... Mm. Chuna manipulation, so, um, I mean, I do have slight back problems, like scoliosis, is it? Where, yes. where the spine is kind of curved. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, could you actually cure uh, things such as scoliosis, or can it definitely help uh, just lessen the seriousness of it? Uh -huh. Usually it develops during a growing age. Uh, yeah? So mm -hmm. you probably you already got it when you were growing, like yes, teenager. I think Usually so, yes. at that time mm. uh, it starts. Mm. But of course, if the scoliosis also ca uh, causes certain symptoms, like mm -hmm. slowly tension, pain right. uh, uh. comes up, then of course we try mm. to regulate it and adjust it as far as it's possible. Yeah. I see. So, as you mentioned, scoliosis. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I were to visit you, if, if someone, a patient, were to visit you at a Korean medicine uh, clinic um, to receive treatment, uh, what's the process? What, what usually happens in the doctor's office? It depends, of course, on the hospital. Ah. Uh, so if you go to a, to a, let's call it a private clinic, mm -hmm. of, of a doctor's private clinic, so usually what they do is uh, he is, he is doing uh, the diagnosis using pulse diagnosis. Yeah, Did here. Does yeah, it here. Which? Uh, here on both sides, usually. Ah. We, what we are checking is basically the function of different organ groups. So mm -hmm. each side here, this is the right side, mm -hmm. it stands for the G related. Yeah, the energy-related mm. organs like the lungs, mm -hmm. air, energy, uh, and then this, the, the bunker spleen, so that means oh. the, the, we call it the energy-making uh, organs mm -hmm. or transfer, transversion organs from the food you eat. Okay, yeah, my digestive. right. Uh -huh. uh, and then the, the yang of the kidney function. Mm. Yeah, there's yin yang function mm -hmm. of the kidneys as well. So those three compounds are checked here on this side. And, mm -hmm. and this on the, on the left side mm -hmm. is the blood related organs. Blood related, with, ah. yeah, Which is the heart, yeah, okay. blood, the liver. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the yin of the, of the kidneys, yeah, mm -hmm. that is also like hormones and, uh, and related. So that's w something we, we check uh, regularly. And then the tongue. Uh, ah. Because uh, from the tongue also we get a lot of information. How mm -hmm. is the cover? Is it thick, thin, yellow, white? No, no cover at all. Is the tongue red? Is it dark? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of information mm. about uh, the internal kind of function of the different it's organs. Very interesting. Ah. And then of course we can do other like palpitation on the, on the stomach. And, mm -hmm. uh, but those are the, the most important uh, uh, ways to get insights, uh -huh. informa information about the patient's function. That's great. <laughs> so that's, that's in, a, in, a, in a clinic, in a, mm -hmm. in a private clinic. Uh -huh. In our hospital, as I said, we are more integrative mm -hmm. and we are specialized on spinal conditions and joint problems. So of course we try to get the, 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 the most objective information about mm -hmm. patient's condition. So we use modern equipment. We have MRIs, x-rays, CT scans, blood tests, everything, everything. What, what, uh -huh. what the modern uh, uh, medicine can offer in order to get the best objective diagnosis. Mm. But then when it comes to treatment, we try to use the traditional forms. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 
since we have a doctor in the studio, um, I'd like to get some doctor's advice mm -hmm. on uh, how to stay healthy during the hot summer season. The basic thing is, um, uh, of course, in summer it's very hot and you sweat a lot. Uh -huh. So most important is that you get enough uh, fluids mm -hmm. in your body, yeah? drink enough water of it. Nowadays, actually, what we have is a, is a big issue because even though it's very hot, or in other words, it's getting more and more hot and to cope with the heat, we're using ACs. Mm -hmm. all the time. So we are spending most of the time in artificial and cold rooms. It stresses our system quite a lot. Uh, the extreme heat stresses yes. it, but uh, if you change the temperatures uh -huh. all the time, heat, cold, it gives a lot of stress. And then when we are very hot, we, we tend to drink cold stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's actually not a good idea. Uh -huh. From our viewpoint, it's better in summer, actually, we recommend more to drink warm teas. Mm -hmm. For instance, especially because our digestive tract also gets weaker. So in summer, a lot of diarrhea or uh. food poisoning and all this kind of stuff happens. So I would say it's good to keep your internal organs warm. Mm -hmm. yeah? That makes it stronger to fight all kinds of different problems. Uh. Yeah? So drinking warm teas like ginger teas or mm -hmm. something, that helps the immune system, that, that helps the internal uh, digestive tract to mm -hmm. work properly. And then another thing with the ACs, uh, if you're exposed to this cold ACs, it comes from different direction, depends where you are. Mm -hmm. But uh, most dangerous, especially if the cold wind uh, comes from the backside uh. toward your neck or this part, mm -hmm. uh, this is very sensitive. There are some, uh, we call it acupoints. Like if those areas are exposed to cold wind, then you catch cold very easy. So try to wow. cover that area at least uh -huh. yeah, in order to protect your or to support your immune system. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you for the great tips. Mm. So I'll remember next time, especially during the summer season when there's you know AC air conditioning all yes. around, never to sit or stand in front of the AC. Or the AC is in back of you. Right, yeah, right. That, that. And always try to drink warm water. Drink something warm. Mm -hmm. oh. So, I mean, you overcame all these challenges and have become the first ever and the only Western Korean medicine doctor in Korea. Uh, what was your most rewarding moment? And if there is a story that you can share, maybe is there an incident that you still remember very clearly today that you may want to share with us today on the show? Um, that's a, actually a question which I'm asked quite often. Uh -huh. What's, what's, the, what's the, the rewarding thing? Right. I mean, as a doctor, uh, and especially, I mean, uh, there are easy cases and there are very difficult cases. Mm. Uh, difficult cases are often those which are very complex. Yes. Yeah? So patients have different kind of illness and you are, you are starting, you think this and try this and try that. But uh, it's, it's always the same. The end is the same. If the patient improves, that's rewarding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is no, I would not uh, want to explain one special case. It's just you feel, you feel really uh, happy as a, as a practitioner when the patient finally, when the all the treatment is finished and the patient feel better and they come to you and say, thank you, because of you, I, I have my life back. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there is not more which can be rewarding mm. for, for a professional like mm. us. Yeah. I guess being able to see a smile on your patient's face is yeah, exactly. uh, the that's, most rewarding. That's most rewarding, yes. actually. Uh -huh. um, now we are left with our final question, and it's almost always like a, a routine question I ask, but mm. I'd like to ask about your uh, future goals and plans. Yeah, as, uh, as I'm in this field of uh, Korean medicine practitioner and as I'm trying for 20 years now to promote it internationally, mm -hmm. so, so to kind of help to globalize the Korean medicine, I would say also the future is quite clear. I will continue uh, this effort uh, to, to find ways to promote it mm -hmm. on different scales. Yeah? if it is herbal medicine, if it is educational, if it is whatever mm -hmm. uh, ways in order to make the people out in the world understand that this kind of medical approach is a good option for many different issues. And so I think that's uh, um, important part of my 
professional future mm -hmm. to promote uh, the Korean medicine mm. more. Thank you. I think it, it felt as if uh, I was taking a crash course on <laughs> Korean medicine today. It was very interesting um, and I, I very much enjoyed uh, the talk we had. And I do hope that traditional Korean medicine does receive the attention that it deserves worldwide. And thank you once again for joining us despite your busy schedule. Thank you to invite me. 감사합니다. It was nice. yeah, thank you. <laughs>